that we understand our roles uh, in terms of uh, the Freedom of Information Act, which is a new act, but which uh, has certain obligations that are seriously incumbent upon each and one of us in this particular group. So, uh, the brief background is, if you look at where I'm coming from, that's from IPA, I'm sure that discuss, uh, that discussion is already ensued uh, in my absence. Where we are coming from, from, from IPA, uh, FOIA then repeals IPA, and we now have FOIA. How does FOIA come into being? FOIA is given then by Section 62 of the Constitution, which says there shall be legislation to make effect the right to access to information. And when FOIA is given then by Section 62, uh, uh, in essence, we are saying FOIA then operationalizes Section 62 of, uh, of, of the Constitution. But for FOIA to operate itself, it cannot without the regulations, which is uh, uh, why we then see statutory instrument 229 of, uh, 20, of 2021. Right. Those are the regulations that then operationalize uh, 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 the, the Freedom of Information Act. So in Terry's presentation, what she's trying to, what she was um, simply saying is that now every organization or entity is required or mandated because the X says shall, and that shall is peremptory in terms of the law. You should have an information office. But however, to remove the doubt, uh, the act clearly says that every head of entity shall be the information office. So if you are head of entity, you are the requisite information office. If you then delegate those powers, like the example that she gave, that uh, our executive secretary, uh, Mr. Godwin Pink, has delegated his information officer powers to Mr. Brian Tom. But however, for whatever Mr. Tomo does, Godwin Pink remains vicarious and liable for the actions of uh, Brian Tom because he remains the principal officer and he remains the information officer. So, in short, 